Energy is the inherent effort of every multiplicity to become a unity. I have no idea what that means, but thanks, Internet. That's right, today we're talking about more energy. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So in the last episode, we talked about energy. True story, bro. And now we're gonna talk about more energy. So let's get started. More energy, a lesson from the matter and energy unit. Quick review. So energy may be kinetic or potential. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, simply converted between different forms of kinetic and potential energy. So in the picture, we have the archer pulling back the cord of his bow. This represents potential energy. As he releases the arrow, all of that potential energy gets converted into the kinetic air energy of the moving arrow. What is temperature? The definition of temperature is the measurement of the average kinetic energy. This means that low temperatures correspond to slow particle motion and high temperatures correspond to fast particle motion. If we take a look at the example in the diagram, we've got two boxes that have particles and arrows that represent the speed of those particles. The longer the arrow, the faster the particle is moving. Taking a look at the box on the left, we have arrows that are pretty short. This means that the particles are moving much slower. So the average kinetic energy of all of those particles is pretty low. So we say the temperature, which is average kinetic energy, is pretty low. Looking at the right, we see particles that have much longer arrows. This means those particles are moving much faster. Notice all the arrows aren't the exact same length. That's okay. If we look at them all, they have a much longer length than the ones on the left. This means the particles are moving faster. They have a higher average kinetic energy, so therefore a higher temperature. Units. So in chemistry, we use units on our temperature scale. We do not use degrees Fahrenheit. We use degrees Celsius, and we also use Kelvin. Let's take a look at a thermometer. If we look at the thermometer on the left, which is surrounded by cold air, those air molecules are moving very slowly. When they collide with the thermometer, they don't make that liquid move as high up in the thermometer, giving a lower temperature. On the other hand, on the right, we have a thermometer that is in warm air. Now these particles are moving faster with more energy, and as they collide with the thermometer, they cause the liquid to rise up higher, giving a higher temperature reading. Temperature scales. The Fahrenheit scale is useful to Americans based on practical experience. We know what to wear when we know the temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The Celsius scale is less arbitrary as it directly is based on the properties of water. So if you take a look at the diagram of the two thermometers, the one on the left is the Fahrenheit scale. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now these are two very arbitrary numbers. Now the Celsius scale on the right, which is based on water, sets the freezing point of water at 0 degrees Celsius and the boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius. The scales are not the same. A change in one degree Fahrenheit does not equal a change in one degree Celsius. Kelvin is based on the theoretical absolute zero, zero K, where there is no atomic molecular motion. Now scientists can't actually get to zero Kelvin, and this is because there's always some heat transfer from the surroundings to make atoms or molecules move. However, they have gotten within one 100 trillion of a degree above zero Kelvin. Kelvin thus has no negative temperatures, and this is very logical because Kelvin is based on absolute zero, which means all numbers for Kelvin will always be above zero and positive. Celsius and Kelvin are the same scale. They're just staggered by 273. So since they're the same scale, one degree change in Celsius is the same as one change in Kelvin. 
I want you to think of the two scales as two ladders. The distance between the rungs is exactly the same in the two ladders, but those two ladders are just staggered off by 273. If we take a look at the two thermometers and we look at the Celsius scale, we see that from zero degrees to 100 degrees, the freezing point and boiling points of water respectively, we have a difference in 100 degrees. If we look over at the Kelvin scale at 273 Kelvin and 373 Kelvin, the freezing and boiling points again, we see that the difference is 100 Kelvin. Thus, the scales are the same, they're just off by 273. All right, and lastly, table T, again, this has all the formulas you're gonna need this year, has the conversion for going from Kelvin to Celsius or vice versa. And that formula is Kelvin equals degree Celsius plus 273. You try number one. You're going to be doing some temperature conversions, converting between Celsius and Kelvin using the formula we just went over. Please show your work, FSA, for these two problems. What is heat? The definition. Heat is the amount of kinetic energy that transfers from one object or medium to another. Now I want you to think of heat as a process. It's always associated with a transfer. Heat's not just a thing. The flow of heat always goes from high to low temperatures. Flow go high to low. Take a look at the picture on the left. We've got a hot object in red coming in contact with a cold object in blue. And when we put them in contact with one another, heat transfers from A to B, hot to cold. And we kind of get an averaging out of the temperature as represented by the purple in the final picture. Now, why is this occurring? Because on an atomic molecular level, there are collisions between the molecules. And you see that there's energy being transferred from the high energy particles to the low energy particles. Units for heat. We actually don't measure heat in calories. Instead, we measure heat in terms of joules, or J. Endothermic versus exothermic changes. Endothermic, endo meaning into, energy is absorbed by the system. Kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. This feels cold to the touch. Exothermic, exo exit, is energy being released from the system. Potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. This feels warm to the touch. Heat is transferred. Coldness is never transferred. Let's say that we add two different chemicals to two different flasks of water. We're gonna define those two chemicals as our system and the water, flask, air, and our hands touching the flask as our surroundings. Now, when we add the chemical to the first beaker on the left and it reacts in the water, we feel that the flask is getting warmer. That's because the chemical is releasing heat to the water, flask, air, and our hands, the surroundings. This must be an exothermic change for that chemical reacting in water. If we look at our second flask, when we add the chemical to the water here, we feel that it's getting cooler than the surroundings. This means that the chemical must be absorbing heat from the water, flask, air, and our hand. That's why it feels cold to us. This must be an endothermic change because the chemical is absorbing heat. Let's do an example. You ready, Fu? I am. During a fall nature adventure, you use a chemical hand warmer. When activated, it causes a chemical to crystallize in water. Describe the transfer of energy. All right, so we are holding a hand warmer in our hands. So what is the direction of heat flow? All right, so a hand warmer is designed to get warm, right? So it's giving off heat, right? So it makes sense that if my hand is taking the heat from the hand warmer, that it's going from the hand warmer to my hands. Sounds good. All right, so from the hand warmer to my hands. Very good. Now, if we're looking at the hand warmer itself, do you think this would be an exothermic or endothermic change? Well, since the warmer is giving off heat, this, the, the heat is exiting the hand warmer, mm -hmm. that means it's exothermic, right? Good. So we generally say that for a hand warmer, it's an exothermic change. But what if we change the reference point and I said, is it exothermic or endothermic for your hands? Hmm. So, well, what I drew before was the heat going 
into my hands, right? So yeah. into means endo, right? Okay. So if it's in the hands, it must be endo. So the hand warmer is releasing heat, it's exothermic. The hand is absorbing that heat, it's endothermic. You try number two. During an athletic adventure, you get knocked over and into your hand. Ouch! To reduce swelling, you apply a cold pack to your hand. When activated, it causes a chemical to dissolve in water. Describe the transfer of energy. Much like we did in the example, you're gonna describe the energy change from one object to another. What is specific heat capacity, also known as just specific heat? The definition is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius. A substance with a high specific heat will take a large amount of heat to raise its temperature. Example is like water. A substance with a low specific heat will take a small amount of heat to raise its temperature, like metals. So one of the analogies I use here is of two buckets. You have a small bucket and a large bucket. They both have a capacity to hold water. So which one fills up faster? The small one. So something with a small capacity fills up quicker. So if we change the water to heat, something with a small heat capacity gets hotter quicker, like metals. They have a low specific heat. If we take a look at the picture seen on your right, let's say we're at the beach, we look at dry soil, it has a low specific heat capacity. So with your bucket analogy, that would be like a tiny bucket, doesn't need a lot to fill it up. So with the sun shining on that dry soil, it's gonna get a pretty high temperature as the day goes on. In contrast, we've got water, that's got a very high specific heat capacity. That's like the larger bucket, it takes more water to fill up. So this is gonna take a lot of energy to raise its temperature. So as the day goes on at the beach, the water's not gonna heat up as much as the dry soil. So what units do we use for specific heat? We use joules per gram times Kelvin or joules per gram times degree Celsius. Notice the table here, specific heats of common materials. We've got water at the top of the list and we've got metals at the bottom of the list. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do an example problem here, so please follow along. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Which substance will have the lower temperature after the addition of 200 joules of energy, dry air or granite? Now Shu, what property do we need to know about dry air or granite to answer this problem? I think we're gonna need the specific heat values. Good, we are. And if you look at the previous slide, we have a table of specific heats of common materials. So what is the specific heat of dry air? Let's see, I've got 1.01 .01 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. Okay, good. What is the specific heat of granite? 0.79 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. Okay, now let's think about this. We're gonna add the same amount of heat to both of these, 200 joules. So they have different specific heat capacities. So what does that mean about the temperature at the end? All right, let me just work through both of these. So dry air, this one has the higher of the two specific heat capacity values. So that means it takes a lot of energy to heat it up and raise its temperature. Yeah, it's like the bigger bucket. All right, and then the granite, that's obviously the lower of the two values. So that's not gonna take as much energy to heat it up and raise its temperature. Yes, that's like the smaller bucket. All right, so because I'm looking for the lower temperature at the end of adding the 200 joules. I think the one that's gonna be lower, not totally sure here, but I think it's gonna be the one that is the higher specific heat because since it takes a lot of energy to raise its temperature, it's not gonna get as high as the granite. Yeah, so the larger bucket won't be as full as the smaller bucket. You try three. Equal masses of iron and copper are both at 100 degrees Celsius. How does the amount of heat that was added to each substance compare? Justify in terms of specific heat values. That's gonna do it for today's episode on more energy. Later, nerds. Today's episode is brought to you by Crib Dribbler Feeding System. Perfect for Kindex Infant Energy Drink, water and juice, 
Stew or cocoa? Formula or milk? Maybe not included. But we never off, we zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.